Some of the most atrocious conflicts on the African continent have been fueled in part by diamonds, now commonly referred to as blood diamonds. Numerous African countries, including Sierra Leone, Angola, Liberia and many others, have rich gemstone deposits that are perfect for military groups to extract and export, and all of these countries have witnessed violence exacerbated by the ongoing battle for power and exploitation of the diamonds. Throughout African history, blood diamonds have played a significant role in a number of military conflicts and many lives have been lost or irreparably damaged because of it. But why? Why does such a precious gemstone that is used to represent many good memories cause so many conflicts in Africa? We know greed plays a huge role, but is there an underlying reason that goes deeper than greed? We'll dig down deep into the darker side of the diamond trade in today's video. Diamonds are meant to represent love, dedication and happy new beginnings. Diamonds, on the other hand, are more of a curse than a blessing for many people living in diamond-rich nations, especially in Africa. All too frequently, the world's diamond mines create not only gems but armed conflicts, bloodshed, exploitation of workers, environmental devastation and horrific human suffering. Several countries in sub-Saharan Africa are plagued by what is known as the resource curse. A resource curse is the result of a country with relatively large amounts of natural resources being used to fuel political or economical turmoil instead of growth. In certain nations, the resource curse manifests itself as a focal point of violent confrontation between governments and rebel groups or others struggle for control of a scarce resource because of the economic benefit it brings, frequently causing greater economic hardship due to the war than the resource could ever supply. Diamonds in particular have been utilized in West Africa for the last 30 years or so to bankroll rebel groups and their ambition to gain full control of their countries through murder and violence. Diamonds lose their elegance and beauty in such contested parts of the world and instead become tarnished with blood. Not long ago, the rest of the world became aware that enormous quantities of diamonds are mined in violent and brutal conditions, often accompanied by bloodshed and violations of human rights. These diamonds are referred to as blood diamonds. What are blood diamonds? Blood or conflict diamonds are diamonds often used to fund civil wars. According to the World Diamond Council, which oversees the international diamond industry, blood or conflict diamonds are illegally traded to finance violence in war-torn countries, mainly in Central and Western Africa. The United Nations defines conflict diamonds as diamonds that originate from areas controlled by forces or factions opposed to legitimate and internationally recognized governments and are used to fund military action in opposition to those governments or in contravention to the decisions of the Security Council. The diamonds are usually in a rough state which means they've just been extracted and haven't yet been cut. At the height of the Sierra Leone Civil War, blood diamonds were believed to account for about 4% of worldwide diamond production. Fueling Civil Wars Sierra Leone, Angola, Liberia, Côte d'Ivoire, the Democratic Republic of Congo and the Central African Republic have all seen violent civil wars driven by diamonds in the last couple of decades. Diamonds are perfect conflict resources for a variety of reasons. The low degree of technology required to remove them is one of the most remarkable. An armed organization doesn't need much else to dominate diamond mines if it has a large labor force in place to pan for the highly precious mineral. Secondly, opposing military forces find it extremely difficult to destroy diamonds. While oil fields can be torched and mines attacked, diamond production is so low-tech that it's nearly impossible for a militant group to destroy completely or loot a diamond deposit. As a result, non-state armed forces frequently turn to diamonds when other sources of funding are insufficient. And because the average terrorist organization lacks the technological capabilities to extract oil from an oil field or manage massive underground mining facilities, they resort to diamonds. By funding troops and rebel militias, diamonds escalate civil wars. Numerous diamond mines in Africa are still plagued by violence with armed groups applying force to capture or control diamond assets. Rival factions also compete for control of diamond-rich regions. 
bloodshed, loss of human life and horrific human rights violations ranging from rape to the recruitment of child soldiers are a few of the devastating results. Despite the fact that many diamond-fueled conflicts have indeed subsided, blood diamonds continue to be a severe problem. In 2013, a civil war started in the Central African Republic, resulting in both sides fighting over the diamond resources of the country. Thousands of people have been killed, and over a million have been internally displaced and rendered homeless. Furthermore, diamond-fueled wars have claimed the lives of approximately 3.7 million people to date, and millions of innocent people are still suffering as a result of these wars. Friends and family members have lost their lives, lives have been wrecked, and physical and emotional traumas have been inflicted which will last for decades. Who suffers the most from blood diamonds? Thousands of men, women and children are being used as slaves to mine diamonds in nations like Sierra Leone, in addition to the innocent people entrapped in the conflicts caused by the trade. They are frequently compelled to adopt back-breaking and primitive tactics, such as digging with their bare hands into mud or gravel along riverbanks. Handheld sieves are then used to separate the gathered material. Governmental violence From assassinations to sexual abuse to torture, diamond mining is rife with appalling brutality. This violence is frequently perpetuated by insurgent organizations. Surprisingly, governments and government-approved mining companies, on the other hand, commit violent acts in Africa's diamond mines, often in countries that are not even fighting any wars. In order to combat blood diamonds, the diamond industry established a global diamond certification program called the Kimberley Process in 2003. Regrettably, the Kimberley Process only prohibits raw diamonds from being used to fund rebel armies in war-torn countries. When diamond miners are murdered or harmed in any way by their own governments or mining companies' security forces, the Kimberley process is rarely implemented. Rather, it licenses such diamonds as conflict-free and permits them to be sold to consumers all over the world. A history of conflict diamonds in West Africa, Sierra Leone. Sierra Leone, which was once a British colony, mined diamonds legally and commercially until 1961, when it gained independence. De Beers, which was granted a 99-year contract giving them complete control of all mining activities, began mining there in 1935. Following Sierra Leone's independence, a series of unscrupulous leaders exploited the diamond trade to mislead their people, provide wealth to ruling factions, and purchase weapons to arm those in power against those who could challenge them. De Beers left because the mines became nationalized at this time. Seeing the national government's vulnerability, a rebel organization known as the RUF, Revolutionary United Front, took up arms and assumed command of Eastern Sierra Leone on March 23, 1991. Under the command of Fode Sankol, the RUF was able to seize 90% of Sierra Leone's diamond market over the next 11 years, which they exploited to raise finances to illegally smuggle in weapons and fund the war effort. Sanko had pledged that the diamond industry's wealth would be given back to the people, but instead ordered his forces to kill innocent civilians, citing this as proof of the government's failure to protect them. During this time, the RUF was known for its blatant disregard for human rights and barbarism. Notwithstanding a brief period of peace in the year 2000, the rival factions were at war again in about six months, and it wasn't until January of 2002 that the UN, British and Guinean forces became involved in the conflict and brought the extended bloody warfare to an end. The Central African Republic in the Central African Republic, a catastrophic mix of diamonds, religious conflicts and poverty ignited a civil war. In 2013, a predominantly Muslim rebel force attacked the capital, Bangui, from the north. Rebels ousted the country's dictator and took control of the country's lucrative diamond fields. Christian militants retaliated, killing tens of thousands of Muslims that had no connection to the insurgents. Militants warring for diamonds, in addition to other resources, is tearing the Central African Republic apart. 
More than a million people have been displaced from their homes as the death toll rises, and a refugee camp near the Bangui airport houses about 100,000 people. Despite the fact that the Central African Republic's diamond exports are declared illegal under the Kimberley process, the country's diamonds are still easily smuggled across its borders and traded to international buyers on the black market. Is the conflict trade limited to diamonds? The answer is no. Global Witness reports that rebel militia groups and combat units in the Eastern Democratic Republic of Congo DRC, have overtaken the mineral ores trade utilized in the manufacture of computers and mobile devices, while subjecting the native communities to killings, rape, extortion and slave labor. Export houses then launder the conflict minerals into the international supply chain, where they are processed into metals by large overseas smelting companies. A Global Witness report reveals that some of the world's most well-known brand names are now being investigated for possible ties to the illicit trade. So what steps are being taken to stop the trade? The major step that has been taken to stop the blood diamonds trade was the Kimberley process. The Kimberley process was instituted in May 2000 when diamond producing republics from Southern Africa met in Kimberley in South Africa to examine measures to eliminate the trafficking in blood diamonds and ensure that diamond sales did not fund warfare. The United Nations, the European Union, the governments of 74 nations, the World Diamond Council which represents the industry, as well as a number of interest groups including Global Witness, came to an agreement. As a result of this agreement, the Kimberley Process Certification Scheme, or KPCS, was incorporated, requiring members to confirm that all global rough diamond exports are obtained through lawful extraction and sales activities and are also conflict-free. Each shipment of diamonds is accompanied by a certificate describing the origins of the diamonds, how they were mined, where they were cut and polished, the involved parties and their final destination. Members of the Kimberley process are prohibited from trading with non-members, according to the agreement. Hopefully, this will help mitigate the prevalence of the blood diamond trade across Africa. So, what do you think about diamonds fueling a majority of conflicts in Africa? Do you think diamonds are a blessing or a curse? Please let's hear your thoughts in the comments section below.